You saw it. <laughs> this is it. Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house this morning and um, good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Um, this is a, a special, special day um, and I love every opportunity to get to be a part of a, uh, a new family's life when they become um, one together and then start having children together um, and uh, I'm thankful for Levi and Maggie but I know the whole family is thankful for Rollins Grace. Amen. Amen. What a blessing it is. Um, and so this morning uh, we we're going to dedicate this uh, this service is going to be her dedication to the Lord. Now I know I, you've, I've said this many, many times before, but really a baby dedication is, um, is more of a charge to mom and dad and grandparents and family to stand with them during, um, during raising that child, right? I mean, to make sure that that child is raised up in the Lord. And so this morning, that's what we want to do. That's what we want to cling to this morning. And that's where I'm going to bring my message from. In just a little bit, we will, um, we will bring the family up here and we will continue in the dedication. But um, if you've got your Bibles with you this morning, I want you to turn to the book of Genesis uh, and the 22nd chapter, Genesis chapter number 22. <clears throat> I know I've asked this before uh, during baby dedications, but um, have you ever wanted to give your child away? Come on, Mom, Dad. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you feel like it. Sometimes you feel like it. Um, but we all know that we love and we um, and the bond that we have with them is, is like no other. They're part of you, right? They're part of you. And, uh, and sometimes that's why they're the way they are. Amen? All right. Um, so what I'm asking is, have, have you ever really recognized your children are a precious gift from the Lord? They belong ultimately and always to God first and not to you, right? He gave them to you to take care of, to, to let you nurture them, to let you grow them in the admonition of the Lord, to, uh, to give you a task uh, to walk through this life with them and protect them until they uh, reach adulthood. And so that's what we are. There's a lot of biblical examples that, that the Bible gives us of, of parents in the Bible who brought their children to God and then gave them back to him. There's the classic example of Hannah bringing her son Samuel, the son of whom she had prayed for, presenting him to God and handing Samuel over to Eli the priest in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27, 28. Now the Bible says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me petition which I ask of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. Uh, of course, you remember Joseph and Mary. They brought uh, the infant child Jesus to the temple following his circumcision at the eighth day. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord in Luke chapter 2 and verse 22. And then the example of an apparent, a, 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 a parent surrendering his child to God and that's what I want us to read about and focus about today um, is that of Abraham offering Isaac up on Mount Moriah in Genesis chapter 22. So let's see what God would have to say to us today about giving your children back to God. Look at chapter 22 of the book of Genesis and then verse 1. And Abraham sojourned, or excuse me, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And said unto Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, 
and offer him there a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I tell thee, which I tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and sat on his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his, uh, unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. And, uh, and Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Hear my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together and they came to a place which God had told them of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Seest thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. <clears throat> and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the steed of his son. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Father, we love you. And God, I just pray that, uh, Lord, just during this time of, of dedication, Lord, during this time where we, we focus on, on Rollins' grace and we focus on, uh, Lord God, just how beautiful she is and how precious she is to, to us, God, let us prove how precious she is to us as we all, Lord God, would surround this family to help raise her, Lord God, in a, in a home that is, that is fitting for you, to help raise her in a home where, where she hears the word of God, where she hears mom and dad praying, where she hears grandmother and granddaddy and grandparents praying around her and with her. Lord, a, a, a family, Lord God, which honors you and in turn honors the life of this sweet, precious baby. Lord, I pray today that you would just anoint this time that we have together, and I ask it in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So Abraham literally, totally, and irrevocably gave Isaac back to God. I mean, like no parent probably would. Abraham loved Isaac. We see in verse 2, God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love. Right? And sacrifice him. Isaac had been a miracle baby. I want you to think about that today. He was born when Sarah was 90 years old and Abraham was, uh, was 100 years of age. And, and, and yes, just try to put yourself in Abraham's place. It was incomprehensibly painful for Abraham to strap his dear son on an altar, on a stack of wood, and raise a knife to slash, slash open the boy's chest and throat. Cremate the body then and sit by as he smelled the stench of the burning flesh of his boy and watch that boy literally disintegrate into a pile of ashes. You say, well, that's pretty harsh. Uh, description there, but that's exactly what would have happened and what Abraham was ready to do because God said, I need a sacrifice. Would you bring your son? But that's not what happened, is it? So think about that. I don't even, I don't know that if God told me and asked me to do that, if I could even think about doing that. I, I, I know that, that we must give our kids to him. We must trust our kids in him and we must surrender our children to God. But man, how hard would that be? Do you know that the best thing that Abraham ever did for Isaac was to tie him up to that altar and to surrender him back to God? God, he's yours. I'm trusting you with this child that you've trusted me with. And Abraham refused to give Isaac. I want you to think about this today. 
That Abraham, had, had he refused to give Isaac back to God, he would have forfeited all of God's promises and plans for Isaac. Isaac would have lived and died in obscurity, a nomad and a nobody. Because Abraham obeyed and gave back uh, gave Isaac back to God. Isaac received the fullness of God's best plan and promise for Isaac's life. Isaac became a wealthy man. Isaac uh, became the forefather of God's own son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaac's life is still having an impact and a blessing on millions of people worldwide through his offspring, Jesus. Amen. And so you and I need to learn from Abraham today if we refuse to fall or we refuse or fail to give our children back to God, we may very well be forfeiting God's best plan and purpose for their lives. And when we entrust our children back to God, we secure for them the, the covenant of, of God's best purpose and plan for their lives. Four elements that I want to talk about this morning. Four elements of giving your child back to God. Four elements of giving your child back to God. What does it mean? It means four different things. Number one, giving your child back to God is a confirmation of your love for God. The first thing you're saying when you give a child back to the Lord is simply that you love God even more than you love your child. Your child is the most prized possession, but don't allow them to take the place of your relationship with the Lord. I love you, child, so much that I want to give you. I, I love you, Rollins Grace, so much, is what mom and dad uh, need to say this morning, so much that I want the very best for you. Even if that means giving you to God, spanking you, giving you limitations, holding the line on those limitations, changing uh, my my life for your benefit, I'll do whatever it takes. That's what we do as parents. And this is exactly what Abraham proved by his willingness to offer Isaac. He was demonstrating that his love and fear for God were supreme in his life above all else. Abraham loved God above the most prized treasure in his life, his only son Isaac. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 37, anyone who loves his father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. So not only... Is it a confirmation? But number two, it is a clarification of ownership. When you give your child back to God, you are openly declaring that this child is a gift from God. This child does not really belong to you. This child belongs to God. Was this not what had had to be on Abraham's mind? It's the only way that he could trust in the fact of what was going on there. It had to be what was on Abraham's mind when he laid Isaac on the altar. Was he not saying, Lord, this young man belongs to you, not me? He was saying, you do with him as you please. He is yours. Psalms 127 and verse 3, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Children are a gift from God. Well, let me tell you something, friend, this morning, just a little side note here. God did not authorize the states to raise your children. Amen. God did not authorize the state to raise your children. And God did not authorize daycare centers to raise your kids. God did not authorize uh, the, the, even the church to raise your kids and pour over them the word of God. But God authorized mamas and daddies to raise their children up in a godly home that would, that, that would be a conduit uh, to follow Jesus Christ all the days of their life. It would be a conduit so that they might be introduced to the Savior Jesus and accept him for themselves at some point in time in their life. So not only is there confirmation, not only is there clarification, but number three, giving your children to God is a commitment. 
It's a commitment to raise your children God's way. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4 says, We are to bring our children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. I want to tell you something this morning. To give your child to God is not just a ceremony, but it is a commitment that you're making today. It is a commitment that you are going to do these things. Number one, be a godly parent. Parent dedication requires getting right with God. Amen. Teach this child of Christ. They'll need to be saved. Keep this child in church, not on a bus, or, or but with you. Le- love this child. <clears throat> Even if loving them means disciplining them, letting God discipline you. Praying for this child, training this child, staying married for this child. There's other reasons to do that, but that's one good one. Make your home a holy place. Put away worldliness and live a righteous life. I think some people see a baby dedication as some magical ceremony where, uh, you know, this, 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 this miraculous thing happens. But let me tell you. This little ceremony means nothing. That means zero if you're not willing to make a sincere, lifelong commitment to raise your child God's way. I like what Joshua told the children of Israel as they settled into their new home in the promised land in chapter 24 and verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served. And serve you the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. I want my family to turn out right. Amen. I want my family to turn out right. And so as a parent, I'm going to begin. I'm going to start at the beginning to lead them in the right way. And that's the kind of commitment God is looking for in all of you parents today. So not only is it a confirmation, not only is it a clarification, not only is it a commitment, but number four, give your children to God as a claiming of God's plan and purpose for that child's life. Isaac inherited God's blessings, protection, and promises because his dad Abraham gave him back to God. Genesis chapter 22 goes on in verse number 15, and it says, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven and, and say, a second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply thee. Thy seed is the stars of the heaven as the sand is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice." Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Parents, do you see what difference it makes in the life of everybody around you by raising your child in a godly home? Amen. Amen. It made the difference. It made all the difference in the world. Your children are blessed by your obedience to God and cursed by your disobedience to God. They have a free will, but you stack the odds. I want you to listen to me right now. Everybody might say, oh yeah, my child, they'll have to make their own choice. One day they'll choose Jesus. Uh, They'll accept him as Lord and Savior and, and that'll be up to them. And I agree with that this morning. Every single individual has to make a choice choice whether or not they're going to follow Jesus Christ or not. But I'm telling you right now, parents, this morning, you set the bar for that. You make the way for that. You are the one who stacked the odds either in their favor, either in their favor or against them by the way that you live your life. So goes your child. So goes your children. So goes your family. I've watched grown men that had to go through a lot of hell before they figured out they needed to change their lives so that they could lead their children. 
And they had to break some curses and they had to break some, some family traditions that, that didn't need to happen anymore. And they, they, had to, they had to actually say, and I had one friend say it, it stops right here, Dad. Now, can you imagine your child saying that to you? Because you have lived a life that didn't need to be lived before that child, that you didn't do what you were supposed to do. And that child had to look at you because one day, thank God, he made his own choice and he'd done what he was supposed to do. But he had to look at his father and say, it stops here, Dad. This curse, this generational curse is over. I choose to follow the Lord. If you think that it does not make a difference in your children's life, the way that you live and the way that you raise them. I'm telling you that I promise you that it does. As you obey God with your life and you give that child back to God, you are posturing that child to receive God's very best for his or her life. Proverbs 22 and verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he shall not depart from it. So this is what it means to give your child back to God. It's a confirmation of your supreme love for Jesus Christ. It's a clarification of ownership. God owns that child. It is a commitment to raise that child under the, Lord's, uh, the lordship of Jesus Christ. And number four, it is a claiming of God's best plan and promises for that child's life. This is exactly what transpired when Abraham took Isaac up on Mount Moriah and laid him on that altar and raised up that knife and said, Lord, whatever it is you want me to do, I'm going to trust you. Abraham was confirming his love and fear for Jehovah. Abraham was clarifying that Isaac really belonged to God. Abraham was completely committing to be a godly parent. And Abraham was claiming God's plans and promises for Isaac's life. And because he'd done what he'd done, man, we are here and blessed today to get to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not a person in here this morning who doesn't have an influence on somebody else in their life. Whether you have children or you don't, the way that you live around the people that you say that you love makes a difference and makes an impact in their lives. Amen. Here's what I want to do this morning. I want you, church, to stand to your feet. I want, I want Maggie, you and your family, grandparents, brothers, sisters, whoever wants to come up, I want y'all to come up and I want you to line up in the front. Don't forget Rollins Grace, please, this morning. This is what I want to do this morning. Come on up here, Green. <laughs> Amen. This is where I want to start at this morning. We got brothers, sisters, moms, dads. We got uh, grandparents up here. And y'all are blessed, ain't you, family? Amen. Y'all been blessed. And this is what I want to say to you this morning. First of all, I want to start with, with siblings, with um, Maggie and Levi's siblings. Y'all have a challenge this morning. Y'all have a purpose this morning. To love that little baby. To care for her. To come along beside mom and dad. And to be the godly influence that she needs in her life. And so I want to challenge you this morning and ask you this morning... Are you willing to be that godly influence in this child's life? Would you say amen? Amen. Amen. And I want to talk this morning to, uh, to the grandparents this morning uh, uh, and the great-grandparents this morning. 
You have a, a, a responsibility not only to love that child, not only to spoil that child, because I know that's exactly what you're going to do, but you have a responsibility this morning uh, to the Lord to say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be the influence, the godly influence, his granddaddy, his grandmother, his nanny, whatever y'all are called this morning. But, but I take the challenge and I promise the Lord to be an influence in this child's life, a godly influence in this child's life, that, that what I do sets the bar high and makes the way for this child to serve Jesus with everything that she's got. Are y'all willing to do that this morning, grandparents? Would you say amen? Amen. 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 And then mom and dad, mom and dad, I challenge you above everybody else in this place today. I know who you are and I love you for it. But I'm telling you this morning, take a step up every day. Challenge yourself to be all the Lord wants you to be in this little child's life. Make that way easy. Life is not easy and there'll be everything against you. And the Bible tells us, you know what it says. It says that Satan is seeking out whom he may devour. He's like a lion going out and trying to find a prey. And he'll, he'll pray on your marriage. He'll pray on your child. But I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be that way, amen, because you've got Jesus on your side. And you can serve him with every bone in your body. And you can fight with everything you've got. And you can raise that child in a home where she will know what it is and what it's like to serve the Lord. Are you willing to do that? Would you say amen? Amen. Church. Church, you have a responsibility. Every single one of us. Sometimes I think we look on as, uh, as just an audience watching a, uh, watching a game play out. But church, I want to tell you something this morning. You've got a responsibility to this family. You've got a responsibility to Rollins Grace this morning to be the men and women of God that he has called you to be, to come along beside them. Listen, you'll see days where they're going to be tired you come in and you lift them up and you stand beside them. You're going to see days where they're going to need to be prayed for. You come in and you pray for them. You encourage them and you be the church that they can count on and you let them be able to say, you know what, I don't know what I'd do without my church family. Church, if you're willing to be that in Rollins Grace Life, would you say amen this morning? Amen. amen. You're committing to the Lord. I hope you're serious today. I want to tell you something. Uh, I, I, there is nothing more precious than that gift of life. And I know that y'all see that this morning. What a precious, precious family. Amen. That this is. Church, would you just bow with me for just a moment? Lord, we love you. And God, I know that... Uh, that, Lord, there's going to be days and there's going to be challenges in her life, in Rollins Grace's life. God, there's going to be times where, Lord, she's going, to, she's going to need you, God, more than she's ever needed you before. God, just to stay in the gap, and I know that you will. And God, I just pray that every one of us that made a vow this morning to stand beside this family and to stand beside this beautiful little girl, God, that we would do our part, Lord God, in helping to just point her in the direction of you in every single way. God, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I want to uh, present this Bible to y'all. We filled it out this morning. Uh, the Bible's inside. There's a handkerchief in there. And uh, just to pour it over Read it to her. And even when you think she can't understand. And the Lord's just going to touch that little baby. And I know he's going to use her in a great and mighty way. Amen. 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 I'll let her get some pictures here. Without me. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to close this morning. We are going to sing a verse of amazing grace. Uh, I remember Nicole saying she could feel the kids moving in her belly when we'd sing at church. 
singing hymns to the Lord and lifting him, his name up. So this is what I want to do. I want to sing one verse of Amazing Grace. And then when we get through singing that, I want you, church, to come and we're going to come around them and we're going to pray for them. If mom and dad just sit right there on the altar, uh, then we're going to come around them and we're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for Rollins Grace. We're going to pray a hedge of protection around them and their family. And we are going to pray God's blessings just be poured out more than they could ever hope or think of. Amen. Would you sing with me this morning? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Hello, friends. My name is Brian Harris. I'm the pastor of Mountain View Baptist Church. And we are so thankful that you tuned in to watch our service today. Now, whether you were watching on Facebook or whether you were watching on YouTube or our website, uh, we are so thankful that you came to worship with us today to listen uh, to the message that the Lord provided. And we hope uh, that he spoke to your heart today. We also want to make sure that we're able to minister to you, whether you're here in person or whether you're at home or wherever you may be watching today. We want to be able to minister to you and to your needs. So uh, if there is a prayer request, if there is a need that you have, uh, you're welcome to contact us. You can contact us through our Facebook Messenger, or you can contact us through our website, and there'll be a link to those on this video. Also, if the Lord dealt with your heart today, and maybe uh, you've got questions about uh, becoming a Christian, uh, be uh, having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then we would love for you to contact us. Uh, we would love to pray with you. We would love to lead you. Uh, through some scripture that might help you and benefit you uh, to to understand just exactly what Jesus Christ done for you. And I want to tell you what he done for me. Uh, I was seven years old. He saved my soul. And, and I have never been the same since. And there is joy in my heart uh, that was not there before. And, uh, and I know that that joy is never going to end. And I would love for you to have that same personal relationship with him. So join us next week. Join us during our Facebook lives. Join us in person. But if we can be a help to you, then please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you.